Hey everybody, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios. I'm back today with another artist interview. So after several months of trying to set this interview up, I finally had a chance to sit down with Marlena Adele Vassar, a longtime collaborator for, for, for me. And uh, we kind of sat down, talked about her past, and uh, the kind of really cool stuff she's doing now as a painter uh, and surreal illustrator. I hope you really enjoy this tutorial as much as I did uh, making it, and uh, I will see you guys soon. Also, one more thing before we get started. Uh, about, I think, five minutes or so into the interview, we actually had to change locations because a heating system kicked on, like, right next to us. So that's what that is. So for uh, those that maybe uh, don't know who you are, uh, watching this video, like, okay, who's this, this new person? Uh, maybe give a, just, I'd say, brief introduction uh, to yourself. Like, if somebody meets you in the street and said, Hi, I'm Marlena, how do you describe yourself? Hi, I'm Marlena. I'm a surrealistic and symbolic painter. Okay. Of figures. Figures, <laughs> all right. Um, so, uh, a question I always like to start with, um, no, other than that one, is that uh, where is it that you first sort of encountered art? Uh, was it something you saw maybe when you were a kid? Uh, something on TV, something in a gallery? Like, what was it that you saw that you sort of recognized inherently that is art? Um, to be honest, I never really have one specific memory of one thing that I remember being art because I've, I'm a firm believer that art is everywhere, you know, like everything from the patterns on people's clothing to labels to posters to art that is hanging in a gallery, that to me is art, you know, things that inspire or motivate us, make us think, that's art. So. For me, um, I don't think that there was any particular thing that I encountered as a kid, but my first encounter, like actually in an art gallery setting, uh, didn't happen until my teen years, because I didn't grow up in Pittsburgh. I grew up in Fayette County, so there, like back then, I mean, there's more of an art presence now, but back then there really was not a huge art presence other than places like uh, Touchstone up in Chalk Hill. That's one example, but that's not really something that's accessible to some of the people in Uniontown, or at least it wasn't back then. But um, yeah, I don't really re remember um, early, early childhood, but uh, th there was this one time where I had AP chemistry as a teen, and my AP chemistry teacher was really amazing, and he decided for whatever reason we were gonna go to the Carnegie after we had this talk at Soldiers and Sailors, he just randomly took us to the art museum and I saw all this art. And I remember what it was too. It was not really <laughs> something that I think that my uh, very Catholic family would have been too excited about. It was this uh, installation. I wish I could remember the artist's name, but the installation was of these photographs of these women. They were strippers on poles and but the thing is is that it was done in a way like the, the chiaroscuro and everything was just so amazing and their body positions and everything was just so amazing and it was like wow it looked like something out of the renaissance like the way they did it and after that i said i'm not going to be a doctor i'm going to be an artist so you, so you sort of didn't have this uh, idea of, of being an artist at first no i mean i was always good at art but i guess I don't know, I was a very weird child. I had like a, this concept of sort of being a mini adult because I had parents who would constantly foster my creativity and they said you could be anything you want, like those type of parents. If I wanted to run off and join the circus, I could, okay? I, I could get away with it. But um, for some reason, I was like this little adult who said that's not practical. And so I just didn't, I don't know, like I, did, I didn't think I could do that as a career choice. And I, from what I'm hearing from a lot of people, that's kind of a normal experience. And a lot of people yeah. have that idea. So no, and then I, I you know, I had um, interest in medicine, so I thought I would become a doctor. Okay. But then that changed that day. <laughs> so you, so I guess I would, you, you would say that that, sort of that, that moment of seeing uh, that rather unusual art Kind of made you like, okay, yeah, I want to be an artist. Um, yeah. Or 
So, so what did that then, uh, like, like what were the steps after that? Were, like, were, were you like, okay, now how do I do this? How do I become an artist? Uh, like, like were you go out and like researching stuff or, or was it just a matter of I'm gonna start making things? Well, I was already making things before that. So, I mean, it wasn't really, um, like I said, it was something that I always thought was going to be a part of my life, making art, but not necessarily be the career choice. Because like I said, I didn't think it was practical, but I've been making art since I was really little because my parents didn't have a whole lot of money. And so we didn't, we weren't like that type of family where, you know, like the kids are constantly in activities, like there's soccer and ballet and all that kind of stuff. And plus, oh, um, Anyhow, you, you were saying um, that you, you didn't have as much growing up, so, so it was part of the event. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like pens and pencils are always around, so, right. you know, when my mom and dad uh, realized that I had that kind of talent, they would say, okay, well, you know, this is free, and you seem happy, <laughs> you know? I think that, that's really good, actually, because, you know, it just seems like kids are so plugged into stuff nowadays and we weren't very plugged in like we didn't really watch a whole lot of tv or anything like that and it's mostly just i read a lot of books a lot of books that drew things so, from my so, imagination okay, I was say, so, so yeah it must have been uh, the books then that you, that you drew uh, that kind of what it was being drew from uh, but because a lot of people are inspired by me yeah i find who were up with, you know, with cartoons movies games uh, but, but, but you had your books, so like, was that kind of what you used for inspiration for your, for your art then? Maybe like at first. I think that, well, because you know how kids are, eventually they start sneaking stuff and I discovered the wonders of anime and games and things like that, but you know, nobody was looking. My parents did let us have some games, like later. I, I think that when I got to my teenage years, like we were allowed to have more than three channels, so like, they, so um, we had, we finally got cable when I was 16, and um, there, I don't know if you remember this, like how they had Sega Channel back in the day. Like yeah. I'm probably dating myself. Oh, like, anyway. <laughs> Maybe you're a lot younger than me. So um, so, but my parents decided that they were gonna get the. Or, I think my grandma bought it for us or something like that, and we had Sega Channel for a while. So I did get like somewhat inspired by regular things, and um, I liked anime, but I was always sneak manga because yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, finding the things and, and really consuming the things that inspire. Me. Yeah. So you, you mentioned sort of getting uh, the idea of being artist in high school. So, well, then. Graduate high school, you move on to college. Uh, now, did you decide to study art in college, or did you pick something else? Or? No, I did study art. Well, actually, it started out with, as a graphic design, and then I switched over to art. Which, looking back, I wish I had not done that because I. And this is something that I tell to you know different people that ask about that and different kids that I mentor and stuff. I tell them, you do not have to get an art degree to be an artist. As a matter of fact, a lot of the artists that I know now that are working in, you know, the gallery scene, like they're showing their work, sharing their work, they never got a degree in art. So if I had to do it all over again, I think that what I would have done actually is stay in for design. Because a lot of my design stuff actually inspires what I'm doing now, and I didn't really pick up a whole lot from art school as far as like for my professional career. Right. Yeah. Sorry if I'm being Debbie Downer to any of you art students, but I'm telling you the truth. This is as real as it gets. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's good to tell it like it is, I think. Yeah, I mean, they, they need to know. They need to know. Yeah, but better than wasting insane amounts of money uh, on either art school or just an art degree at a, at a, like a liberal arts college or something. Whatever it happens to be. Well, I, I mean, I don't know if so much of um, education. I don't think education of any kind is a waste. But the thing is, is that, like, I, I encountered this one situation with um, a student I was working with. I did a residency, and um, there was, like, a teaching component with one of the students that I was mentoring. And she was trying to get ready for college, but I knew, you know, she had had some financial hardships and stuff, but I kind of had to, like, 
tell her, you know, I think that if you don't get a scholarship, then maybe what you should do is choose your other interests to go to school for, you could still show your stuff in a gallery and then maybe minor in art because the thing is is that if you decide to uh, pursue like an undergrad in art, a lot of times if you decide to work in arts administration or anything else, you're going to have to continue and you know go for an MFA. I don't really know how many people are required to get a PhD. But I know, like, well, in in some areas, like right. they, yeah, they might need you to have PhD, but that's very costly and very expensive, and some people can't do that. So I think it depends on people's circumstances. But I guess, like, like I said, if I if I had known better back then, I probably would not have um, necessarily gone in for that in undergrad. Like maybe minored in art or something, and just gone for my first interest because I probably could have still gotten an art career going anyway. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you, you made that shift from graphic design to, to, to I guess, a finer art area uh, in, in school? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, what was that shift like? like uh, I mean, you could probably go from more, I guess, computer classes into uh, traditional drawing and painting like like what was that transition uh, for you like um to be honest it was a hot mess <laughs> it was a hot mess but I think that that was mainly because the program that I was in they didn't really because I transferred schools so it was kind of a mess just for the transfer and then on top of that like it, the program was not incredibly structured, like there were not uh, regular portfolio reviews for that type of thing. Um, I think that you need to have regular portfolio reviews, that's really important. So, because um, there were some classes, like for instance, I never actually learned how to paint in college because what for whatever reason they decided that my graphic design experience was enough for me to skip painting one I don't know why but the, so then I went to painting two and I didn't know what to do and then the teacher was kind of and I understand because you know there people were human but the teacher was kind of trying to uh, get me to paint like um, I remember she was really obsessed with Paul Clay she was like wanted me to paint like that but the reason she wanted me to paint like that is because I because I used to pay attention to my professor's work all the time, and so I looked at her work and I was like, oh, her work looks a lot like Paul Clay's. So it was only natural for her to want to impart that on me because it's something that she loves. And I think that's a really human tendency. I don't think that she did it to be mean or anything. She didn't know that I really had an interest in figures. Right. But, I mean, if you've seen my work, you know it's not really a whole lot of Paul Clay, unless it's like the backgrounds or something, maybe, yeah. but, yeah, so, <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just stuff like that. Um, there wasn't, I kind of just had to kind of find my own way a lot, because, yeah. yeah. It seems to what it is. I've, uh, I kind of had this idea early this year about, uh, kind of having to forge your own path to some degree. Yeah, definitely. Um, as an artist. Um, so, uh, you, you went through school and uh, I guess you graduated, I'm not sure. What yeah, I graduated. So, <laughs> Thankfully. Uh, so, w what was the time like for you after that period? So, you, you sort of grown into, uh, into this artist. And you're like, okay, I'm going to start marketing my work, selling my work. Like, like, like what was the that push to do it I guess more in, in, in that professional setting, and like, and how did you go about doing that? I would say. Um, well, actually, the first year—well, I shouldn't say the first year out of college, but technically, what would have been my last year in college, I started prerequisites for a master's degree, okay. and that was when I picked up stuff like media design, and I thought, oh, I love games and anime, I should become a game designer, and I was, I was really inspired by game design art, so, um, but the time in that program, it, it just kind of hit me, like, yeah, this is going to be really expensive, and I need to work for a while, so I stayed in for two quarters, and then I left with the intention of coming back, and I did not go back, so, <laughs> well. which is a little regrettable, but 
Um, so the, by this time, I wasn't living in Pittsburgh anymore. I should probably okay. note that I was living in Philadelphia. Okay. So I don't know. Like I had gone through some stuff. Like I had a really bad breakup. Like I literally graduated, and then my long-term relationship ended, mm -hmm. like within the span of a month. So so we had all these changes happening. And yeah. Just left with. What do you do? Yeah, exactly. But the thing is, is that I said, okay, you can sit down and cry over this person who honestly isn't worth it, because I mean, it's just not worth it. Or you can reinvent yourself. And so I decided to do all these different things that I never wanted to do. I got a haircut. I changed out all my clothes. I got a brand new wardrobe. I decided I was going to start showing my art, but I didn't know where to start. Yeah. So it's like, no, because nobody tells you that. Yeah, nobody told you that in school, so like, I was like, okay, well, I don't know what I'm doing, and I just kind of floated around, and I said, okay, I'm going to hang out at the art store. I bought art things, and, you know, went home after work, and, you know, drew things, and then I would find out about art shows and open calls and things like that, and this one day, um, I don't know what it was that I just, I, I just decided, I think it was maybe like a year, maybe not quite a year after I graduated. Um, I saw this advertisement for a show about self-portraits, and I thought, oh, that's cool, and, you know, I figured it was like a contest or something, so I figured, okay, okay, I'll enter this. Well, I found out later that it's, they were actually going to debut all these at the Franklin Institute. Jeez. So I thought, oh, this is really interesting to me now. Yeah. So I worked my butt off on that portrait, and it is so bad. Like, I still have that <laughs> portrait. It is so embarrassingly bad. But people love it. Like, there's people that still email me about it and include it in Pinterest albums and stuff. I randomly found it on Pinterest last year. Like, some, like people have it and they share it. But I'm like, okay, well, if you guys like it, I don't really care for it, though. <laughs> but, but anyway... Um, they 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 uh, had these portraits, and I think there were something like a couple hundred people that had entered. And I thought, well, maybe I'll get in. And then I made the cut, and I think they had like I don't even remember how many, like maybe a dozen or so, maybe like a little bit over a dozen people that were selected for this thing. So then halfway through the show, they decided, you know what, we're gonna amp it up a bit, and they decided to have a community vote. And they decided whoever won the community vote, they were going to give them a solo show in the Franklin Institute. And um, it was really funny, too, because I had this idea that I really would have liked to have my own gallery show. It was like, like a distant dream. Yeah. Like, oh, I'd love to have my own gallery show by the time I, I'm 25. I yeah. I, I didn't have an age on it, but like, when, when, I, was oh, sort of, when, I, when I was coming, because uh, I was uh, in school in Ohio, when I came back, I was just like, I want to have an art show. I'm like, I'm like, I don't care where it is. I don't care how many people come. I just want to have an art show. Oh, see, I think that stuff is important. You know, yeah. you need to have, you need to have goals. You need to have dreams. It's important. So you, you had the idea of being at the Franklin Institute. No, I just wanted to have a solo show by the time I was 25. Okay. But but the thing was is that I thought, okay, well that's like a distant, far off dream and whatever. So mm -hmm. but, but but my work was already hanging up there, so I already felt pretty accomplished. Yeah. So then it was I remember the exact day we got furloughed at my job because I, I worked at this job that drove me crazy. But but anyway, um, we got furloughed and I was so happy even though I wasn't getting paid that day. So I was like, oh, that's a Friday. I'm gonna sleep in. And so I remember I got a phone call from this. Number I didn't recognize, and I was like, "Man, they're waking me up on my day off, and it was really rainy and gross outside." I was like, "I'm not going anywhere today." So I picked up the phone, and it was uh, the curator from the Franklin Institute. She was like, "You won the popular vote." I was like, "No way!" So, and that happened five days before my 25th birthday. Wow. Yeah. That is a. Can you believe that? That is like a fake moment, right? Yeah, there. I know. Yeah. I, that is incredible. It seems like this. I, I, I kind of noticed this with a lot of artists is, is that it's it's not so much like like the big break moment. It's a lot of it's a series of really lucky events. Yeah, yeah. Because even it, after something good has happened to me, like there's all, like sometimes there's been good like countered with bad, and you but it's like coming back after you know the the bad stuff happens. Yeah. When I was little, there was um, I had this. Uh, doll. It was like a, one of those inflatable dolls that you could knock over. It was, actually, I remember what it was. It was the, this Grimace doll, 
you remember Grimace, yeah. the, the, the character yeah. from McDonald's? Yeah. So, like, it was a Grimace doll. My sister and I used to have bought a whale on it thing. But anyway, um, I thought, you know what? You have to be like Grimace when you get knocked down or you get criticized by these people because not everybody is going to like your work and not everything is going to go your way. And no matter how frustrated you are, you have to be like Grimace, you know? They knock you over or you have to get pop back up. Back up yeah. So I, I kind of want to both backtrack a little bit as well as kind of push ourselves forward. Yeah. So you went from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia. Why? <laughs> because I was a very ill-fated... Uh, yeah, that, that it was bad decisions. Bad decisions. <laughs> well, okay, actually, here's what happened. I mean, was I, it I, like, I just want to get out of, out of the home area and travel, or...? or no. Was it you, you found no. a job? I mean... No, I mean... There were, yeah, it was a relationship. Don't ever move for anybody. I'm telling you guys right now, don't ever move for anybody. I don't care. Never mind that I did move here for my fiance, but <laughs> that was the other but that, question of, of, of what brought you back to Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah, well, no, that's not what brought me back to Pittsburgh. That was a long, messy story. My life is a mess. It's like Joey on the scammer level messy. It was like, well, well, let's just kind of kind of jump around the edges of it for today. Okay, so basically what happened was I graduated from the school I was going to here. Okay, so I graduated here. I was with somebody who was like talking engagement and the, that person ended up going for a developer job out in San Francisco. So I moved to San Francisco and was there for a time, but then school started back up so I came back here. I desperately wanted to move to New York, which I know there's probably like a lot of artists who are like, eh, New York, which I kind of still have a really a deep place in my heart that has love for New York, and I probably would still want to get a studio and be in New York, because I love New York, but um, I, I, I desperately wanted to move to New York, and the guy I was with was just very, like, suburban, and so Philadelphia was kind of our compromise city, because it wasn't his hometown, but it wasn't New York, so Philly, Philly's perfectly located everything, and plus I had gotten accepted to a master's program there, so it all fell into place. So that's how I, actually how I ended up in Philly. Yeah. So from, from the Franklin Institute uh, show, and then I guess back to Pittsburgh, what, what is that kind of So from, from this awesome show that you got to be a part of, to Oh, no, 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 I'm a lot older than I look, that he, I, he only came into my life about five years ago, this is, we're talking like a long, because by this time, this all started back in like 2008, I've been in this for like about 10 years, yeah, close okay. to 10 years now, so let's, let's try, yeah. let's try and catch up between here and there, then. okay, yeah, um, so I, I don't I don't leaving Philly. Honestly, yeah, I was gonna say I don't really have a question to prompt this because I don't I don't I don't know what it's about Philly, I guess. But uh, so you were in Philly for a while. Yeah. Um, what brought you back to Pittsburgh? Um. Oh, I remember. I took this job that was just. I think it was just ill fated. Like <laughs> that's why I say it's. You have to be like nervous and come back up, you know, because what happened was I was supposed to do a mural commission, but the people that commissioned me, they were really just, they didn't have it together. And I had a contract and everything, but the, what happened was just so messy, it was going to take me more money and time to fight them. So what had happened was I left my job in Philly and figured, okay, well, I'm going to work for these people for like a year but then I'll be able to get my art career going, right? But then they tanked, and I mean, it was like, it was maybe a matter of, I think I only worked for them for maybe like two or three months on this mural, and I had already like started working on it and everything, but yeah, they just abandoned the project. I came in one day and the place had locked on the door. Yeah, and by this time I had already, um, I didn't have a job, so I thought, well, um, it's either that or I'm going to lose the leaves on my apartment, and uh, the thing is, is that one of my patrons, somebody who collects my art, who is a really wonderful person, happened to uh, not be too pleased with the people that commissioned me, because I guess they were familiar with this person, like, kind of being flaky, um, or this company being flaky, 
So what had happened was is that this person felt really bad for me and said, hey, you know, I have a space. You know, it's not the greatest space, but you can just be here and make some work for free and, you know, just hang out and make work here. So I got the so top floor of the house. going to be like a... Yeah, yeah so I was like, well, okay, I can't get my old job back anyway, so I'll go here. But that wasn't in Pittsburgh. That was in my hometown, Uniontown. So okay. I actually went back to Uniontown and lived there for a couple of years. Let's, let's, let's and then came back here. Because it's a little closer. Yeah. And then I came back here. But that was different because I, I met my fiancé kind of when I was living there, but... Um, it was different because I'm not really a country person, so I kind of, it was kind of like an easy way. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, I'm moving to the city, you know. Plus, by that time, I was showing around here more. I think by that time, I had also met you when we were because right. the first year that we oh. did our collaboration, yeah, the first year I was still living in Uniontown, but then you know it was just like more activities were taking place here, so it just was a move that made sense by then. So, um, so I'm glad I did. Yeah. <laughs> so, thought, thought of this one, so we seem to be talking a lot about working terrible jobs, uh, specifically non-hard non terrible jobs. Um, how much can you recommend it, though, uh, as an artist? Because I don't actually don't know a ton of artists that are just full time. So we, all, we always talk about like, going, yeah, this is what I do full time. Yeah. And, and, but I want to go, but I have this new job because I got to pay my bills. Yeah. Like, is, is that a good balance for you, or would you rather just be paid? Um, I really like my employer. I'm not going to throw them under the bus. They treat me very well. <laughs> or we're not saying names, so, you know. <laughs> but um, the thing is, is that um, if you had asked me that question a couple of years ago, I would have said, man, F this, I want to pay full time and blah, blah, blah. And it's not that I would turn down the opportunity to pay full time, but honestly, the job that I have now, I love it so much, and my coworkers are wonderful, everything is great, and it almost makes me afraid to leave, or like guilty about leaving, because I'm like, wow, I finally have a job that I really, really like, and the company pays well and stuff, so I guess it's one of those things where you maybe your answer is different at different times in your life. Maybe 10 years from now that won't be realistic for me anymore because I'll be too tired. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it just depends. But right now, I would say there's no reason to leave. Yeah. I think, uh, for me, where I'm at now, I feel like it's, like it's the best of both worlds. It's like I get to be an artist when I can, or I get to be a normal person when I can. Yeah. And that's the that's nice. Plus, your jobs can inspire you in ways that you don't always think. For example, when I was a graphic designer, um, the, a lot of the color schemes that I would use in my ads that I would make, in my ad templates, I ended up getting inspired to use those in my paintings. Just different things, or different shapes, different backgrounds, things like that. And even now, I think that the job that I have now, um, I work in technical support, so the thing is is that a lot of that stuff, I never would have touched any of that stuff years ago, but in a way it's kind of inspired me to push myself to that next level because I'm like, oh hey, I am capable of doing this, I'm capable of, I, I now know what stack traces are and how to uh, read them <laughs> and do different things that I never thought I'd be able to do. It actually even inspired me to redo my website, so my website's a little bit more sophisticated now, you know. But if I hadn't had that job, would I really have felt like I needed to push myself in those ways in my art? So there's that way of looking at it too. Yeah. So we've talked a lot about uh, so your past, what got you to where you are today. Uh huh. But I think it's about time to talk about your actual work. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Let's talk about work. Um, I, I kind of have you listed, at least in my notes, as an acrylic painter, but you, but you do a lot of different media. Uh, you, yeah. You, you're, you're a lot like me. You'll, you'll kind of do just about everything uh, to some degree. Uh, but yeah. I, I'm, I'm curious. I hate acrylic, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I hate acrylic. I will paint with it because I have to. But I don't, I'm no. It's, it's getting better. It's getting better. Actually, painting with you has helped me a lot. Like, there were certain things, like, when we were doing collaborative work, I never, I thought, oh, I didn't know that I could use it that way or, or anything. 
because you're not really relying on media this long. Um, I, I do now, but I Oh, do. really? Oh. I'm not, not totally relying on them. I'm still very much water-based, but... Yeah. I, I, I'm slowly sort of working with different things. Okay. But, but I don't have to. Like, if I need an album, I don't have to do yeah, see, I don't know if I would like that. I like my, I like my blazing mediums. I'm extra. I like my blazing mediums. But, eh, I, I mean, it really it has a practical purpose because there are certain things that you could do with that that you can't do with oil. So I really haven't picked up oil all that much in the last couple of years. Mainly because I just needed to get things done quickly. And if it's in situations like, for instance, um, this, this last year, um, up until this residency, actually, I really wasn't doing a whole lot of gallery work. I was doing things like murals and installations and some different things like that. So, um, you know, you will want to use oil paint outside. Right. Right? So you use acrylic or spray paint, those type of things. So it goes back to pushing yourself to do the stuff that you wouldn't right. normally do. <laughs> so I, yeah. guess, I guess it was more oils, I guess, you were using at college then, or...? Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. Because I, my thinking about it was I didn't really know how, like, the academic way to use oils, but... You, you skip painting one. So. Yeah, because I skipped painting one. I didn't know how to paint. I was like, okay, well, and then this lady is telling me to paint patches and squares. I'm just like, oh, okay, well, you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but I was never really taught how, but I, in my brain I was like, okay, acrylics dry fast. Oils dry slowly. Let's go with the oils, because I can get more done now, and so, yeah, that's kind of why I picked the oils. But, I mean, with acrylics, you have options. I mean, you can use mediums and, right. yeah, and painting it patches. That was, like, the biggest wake-up call for me. Like, oh, this is why it looks like garbage, because you're trying to do everything tiny. at once. Yeah, because... Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, when you make things, they always encourage you to go, like, all over the surface and keep working all over the surface, but that doesn't work when you go to paint with acrylic. Right. Yeah. Um, and you also work with um, colored pencils, uh, I, I find, I don't want to say a lot, but often, we'll say. <laughs> no. No? <laughs> Not really, no. Just say, every time I see something new from you, it, it's, it's like colored pencil and that copper stuff. No, 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 those, those weren't, uh, no. I really don't use a whole lot of colored pencils. I mean, sometimes I'll do it to throw in some detail, but but not primarily. Okay. Like, maybe for uh, just drawing, like, some line work, but but not a whole lot. I, the last time I really did anything significant with uh, colored pencil, really, it wasn't even that significant. It was a demo. Like, I, was, I did uh, Prismacolor demos. Okay. Like I was one of their, because you know how every once in a while they'll bring an artist to, mm -hmm. to do demos and things like that. Like I think that was the only time that I remember doing anything with right, them. So, I have I remember, seeing, I remember seeing a, a few uh, come out on, on your website and things, but... No, I think it's just... Let, a, let's think of something else. I might just think of something else. Maybe. I don't know. But the thing is, is that I get really over, and this has been a kind of a problem too, because like, I've tried not to do over rendering anymore, is like going in with a really tiny brush with the paint. Mm -hmm. So I, that, maybe that's what it was. It could be. Yeah, maybe. Okay. I'm, I'm notorious for over rendering working on it though. Well, rendering is good, just not everywhere. Over rendering. <laughs> so, so, so yeah. I, I guess to, as a correction to, to that entire rant, what would you say is your, your choice go-to medium? Or, or do you have one? No, I don't really have a favorite anymore. I would say oil, but like I said, I was kind of I was kind of mean to the oil. I just abandoned it. You know, like you don't serve my purpose right now. So, so. so I guess you would say it's more it's more project based. Right? Yeah, it has to be. It has to be. I mean, this past month, I mean, because you know Inktober just closed, I could not, I was like, oh, I don't, I don't like ink. But I would just make myself use it. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's just about, yeah, like you said, project-based. Yeah. So yeah. just like what you need for that particular project or, or what you like. Yeah, maybe some of this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, most of the work for um, this show, more than likely, I'm just going to have most of it be in acrylic and then the top layers be in oil, because I really would like the chance to use oil again, but I know I'm supposed to 
it hasn't been finalized, but there's supposed to be a mural that I'm doing, so then, you know, I'm going to be using a lot of spray paint. So. <laughs> you just got to have to be versatile, I guess. Yeah, I have to be versatile. Everybody has to be versatile a little bit. <laughs> so, so we've kind of, you've mentioned this show and this place a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't really talked about that yet, though, so. Yeah. Um, where are we? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, and, and, uh. Uh, let's, let's start with that. Where are we? We are in the brew house distillery residency area in Southside. This is the, uh, from what I understand or what I've been told, this is actually the first year that this has been used. Okay. Like any of these studios. It, it looks very clean, so that kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we're, we're, we're making sure that that's no longer the case, <laughs> as you can Just see. throw some paint on the walls. Yeah, I, I felt something. kind of bad, because I got some red paint on the walls. <laughs> Battle scars. Yeah. So, sir, so you're in doing a residency. Um, mm -hmm. I know, I gotta admit, I don't know a ton about residencies. Um, so, how do you even go about getting a residency? Like, like that, that's one of those things where it's just like you hear about artists that are doing them, and uh -huh. like, yeah, like I've heard like, oh yeah, every artist should do at least one in their life. But it's like, how do you even find out about a residency or, or uh, apply for one or, or get into one? Um, that's a great question. There's a couple of different ways that can happen. A more the most common way I think is that people will apply and respond to a request for information or a request for, well, yeah, a request for information, I would say that uh, artists will go ahead and apply for them. There's different sites where you can do it, like, um, I'm trying to think, it's called Cafe, Call, call for Entry. Yeah. So, like, there's you know one there. Yeah. And then um, some of them, like, if, you, if you're a Pittsburgh artist, one site that I think is really good is um, the GPAC website, so the Greater Pittsburgh Arts Council mm -hmm. website. So if you go on there, they post all kinds of different opportunities that are, have different deadlines, different things like public projects, residencies, all kinds of things. And then I know, I don't go on the site as much anymore, but I, I think it just depends on where you want to show your work or where you would like to work. Uh, but NYFA is another good one that I found that people will have posts there and some of those posts are in New York but I think that they post things from all over the US and sometimes all over the world yeah and I know um, the other one that I have looked at I haven't looked at it in a while but it's a really good one for especially for international residencies is a play, it's called res artist and um, yeah but you basically would have to go and submit your materials there may or may not be a, a proposal that you have to do. I know for this one, I just submitted my work. Mm -hmm. So it was just basically off of the work. I didn't have to say like, hey, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z for my residency. So, yeah. So you come here, you have a, a studio space, mm -hmm. uh, and you work on stuff for like a year or something like that? Or? Yeah, it's about a year. It's a, Well, I think maybe like 10 or 11 months, but yeah, close to a year. And then it all kind of culminates with the big art show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's an art show. Um, I guess we're just going to have it in the gallery that's downstairs. Okay. Um, so, so if you want to get some pictures of that. Say, the, things are yeah. kind of up in the air right now about exactly when and exactly. All the, like, like, you, you seem to kind of be like, well, yeah, we don't really know. It's going to be sometime during yeah. this month. Uh, but it, like any information you have that you want to share, at least at this point in time, uh, feel free to do so. Well, I believe it is going to be in... June, but I've heard April to June. Okay. That's the one thing about working with residencies is you kind of have to be on your feet because things can change. Things can change, and so, um, but that that's what I understand that it's going to be between April and June okay. here in Pittsburgh, well, <laughs> here good. in the brew house. Um, so, so in, in in preparation for April to June, you're working on a sort of a body of work, so uh, mm -hmm. a, a, a selection of new things. Yeah. Um, can you or do you want to talk about any of those things um, uh, in, in terms of what you're making? Or, or you just want to keep it a secret until then? Oh, um, uh, no, I mean, I don't mind talking about it. I don't feel like I really have a, much as much to say because we're like halfway through. Right. So, <laughs> well, I'm not even halfway because we, let's see, it's November. Let's see. No, but yeah, so we were only like about three 
monsoon. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I really haven't figured out like what it is. I think it's mostly going to be the, just picking up from where I left off because before this residency, I kind of had um, slowed down with my work a lot. Mm -hmm. And then I told you to um, about like how my house flooded and a lot of right. my work got destroyed and I got a little bit frustrated and sad yeah. after that. I, I would be. That's like yeah, so much my stuff. I mean, if, if my if my basement flooded, I would be devastated. Yeah. So I think it's maybe just picking up where I left off and not, you know, Thinking getting about discouraged. Getting, getting the grimace image back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you like grimace? Pop back up. So. But um, one theme that I think that is going to be big in this one is the whole idea of um, not railing against my creativity, because that's been a problem. And I, I, do, I just discovered this from, because um, we for this program, we have mentors that come in and help us. And um, my mentor is actually a wonderful artist named Crystal Latimer which um, she's pretty popular, popular around Pittsburgh as far as her painting and everything. But um, she sh shared a book with me called Big Magic. And I started listening to this, and it's like one of those books, you know how like a book will tell you stuff that you kind of already knew, but it's like hearing somebody else say it, it's like a revelation. And you know it's nothing new, but it's, it's like there were so many of these things that the author was talking about that resonated with me and I said, you know, I need to stop really against my creativity and being overly perfectionistic. Letting go. I think that's going to be like the big theme for these upcoming works. That's really awesome. Yeah. I, I, I wish you luck with your continued work. Thank you. Uh, here as well as uh, with the show that I really got to try and come to. Once there's a date, I can Yeah, out. definitely. So, uh, I think I'll kind of just grab some things up. Uh, a lot of people that watch my YouTube channel are beginners, they're first timers, they're aspiring artists, and, and they're also artists of, uh, I, I have found a variety of agents, uh, and they're all over the world too. Uh, what kind of uh, advice or words of encouragement would you give to, to an aspiring artist that maybe wants to be a, a, a gallery artist, uh, or even to work in design at their story? What kind of advice would you give to them? To, to just kind of push them forward. Don't quit. <laughs> Don't quit. And make work for yourself. Because ultimately, if you start making work to please yourself, you will come to that point where you... I mean, you're never, I don't think anybody's always going to please other people. Don't worry about pleasing other people, because it's, it's not going to always work in your favor. Please yourself. I, I find that I'm the happiest when I'm making just the stuff that I think is cool. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, I guess, final wrap up. Uh, where can people find your work online and any other kind of social links that you want to plug? Feel free to do it, and we'll put links to those in the description box below. If you want to do okay. Well, all my social media accounts, nearly all of them, are under Marlena Adele. So, there's that, and my website is marlena.me, and he's going to spell it for you because I know that it's going to be a little challenging, and that's okay. I can't spell I'm it now. I'll have to do it on the <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much for doing this. Uh, oh, you're welcome. Thank uh, you for visiting us. Yes, uh, this is this was great. Uh, it took us. I just want to say it took us the better part of three months, I think, to yeah. finally set this up. Uh, yeah. After talking about it for two years, or something of that nature, I can't really remember. Really? I, I brought it up after our first couple of collabs. Oh, I think it's because I didn't have a studio space back then. I was just kind of that was the, the floating years. Yeah. Yeah. But well, I was spaced out. <laughs> thank you so much. So. Uh, and, thank you. Uh, for all of you at home, be sure to subscribe for more artist interviews like this in this event at Center Block Studios. See you guys next time. So, I'm just going to get my train of thought here. Let's lean in and check on that. Okay. Uh, you, you cut it? Yeah, no. I think you probably had to edit this to hell and back because it's, it's not it's like that. It, it'll talking. most be uh, just I most, mostly just checking my battery level, which we're okay for a little while yet.
Yeah, I'm sorry, I did talk a lot. No, it's fine. <laughs>